Polo number nine. <laughs> Not Mambo number nine, sorry. Polo number nine. This has one flat in the key signature. I draw your attention to this because it also means we have a bunch of naturals to take into consideration. And this is one of the few times where I would say, you should probably play the F major scale before you start. So let's do that. Now, component of a major scale, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So let's start on F natural, upper tone to G, upper tone to A, semitone B flat, tone to C, tone to D, tone to E, semitone F natural. Easy. Okay, let's go back down. Let's go again. Just check that those second fingers are really beautifully in tune. Ready? And. study it's almost working the idea of trilling on two strings so there are spots in here where you can hold one chord down and add and there are spots where you're going to need to transition and lift and switch the balance of your hand around so it does need a loose left shoulder it needs a very strong stomach because you have to be so loose in your upper body and so relaxed that your spine just falls down from your head and all your limbs are floppy and lovely, but you're very strong in your torso so that your bow can stay balanced on the strings. Uh, think about the gravity of your left hand fingers, because if you start clenching, you're going to be in big trouble. You can't play this accurately with clenched fingers. It needs a very free fourth finger in particular. So if you have a, a habit of dropping your fourth finger, don't play this. Revise the previous studies with a lot of attention to the position of your fourth finger when you're not playing it, especially when you're playing a one and a three. You've got to make sure that fourth finger's up. If it's dropping, nine isn't going to work for you. It's just going to be a disaster. So with all the love in my heart, make sure your fourth finger is well placed before you attempt nine, because I would rather you succeed than fail. Let's take a look at just the first bar, okay? Set your F natural nicely, find your third. Oh yeah, sounds cranky, doesn't it? Now, I'm going to leave my second finger on the string and just drop the one and three on in front. This relies on good position. If my second finger's a bit leaning this way, then it's not going to let my first finger sound clearly. If your second finger is centered on the D string and even tipped a little bit before toward the G string, you'll be able to get the B flat to sound nicely. Ready, and. You need to pivot and drop your fourth finger onto the D string and take the second finger to A string. Okay, if you're feeling clever, you can leave the first and third finger on the string and just place the two and four in front of them and lift them off again. Ready, and. Place the two and four. Go back to the two, climb up, cross. Did you get the fifth with your third and third? Make sure the third finger is placed between the two strings, not on the G or the D, but between them so it can pin them both for pitch accurately. Again, let's play the first two bars. If your intonation's right for these guys, you'll be well set up for the whole thing. So it's worth investing a little time in getting the relationships correct. I have my um, left elbow very far forward. I'm just gonna angle that down a little bit so you can see that this is coming around to really support my fingers dropping onto the string. I remembered not to wear black, hooray. Ready and. <laughs> Let's tackle. 
tackle the next two bar chunk. So we're starting with the third bar now. Set up your third again. So the, the third bar is dead easy because it's recycled material. You do have a new chord coming in there right at the end. And make sure that you bring your first finger up for a ringing A. So use the second finger. This is weird, right? Because the A is the ringing note. But my advice to you is to use the second finger to help you place the one accurately. Just because that one is a little prone to go out of tune, especially in chords. Let's play the four notes around that. So we get... Ready, and... One more time. Cool. And then the fourth bar of the line, which is new stuff. Sorry, I didn't let my open G sound then. I played a fifth instead of the sixth. Let's play that bar again for me. idea of your fingertips staying quite close to the string uh, every time you lift them to change think of lifting them the minimum amount you know like like skipping rope I'm quite lazy I only want to jump high enough to let the rope go through I'm not higher than that I'm not into doing more work than I need to let's try the whole first line at a moderate tempo focusing on fingertips gravity so lead weights in your fingertips not clenching not using the thumb on the back of the violin at all. It's really disengaged and pulling the arm around so that I can let my fingers drop. It's the key word, let. Ready, and. me I will never know press pause practice it again yourself second line first two bars first bar is dead easy because it's a repeat happy days let's play the second bar a little more slowly to let the first finger move accurately between B flat and E natural grab a pencil and I'd mark a semitone between my first and second finger. It's obviously not a semitone between the two sounds. It's a semitone across the strings. My fingers are playing a semitone apart, but on different strings. And I would like to remind myself of that on the E C chord. That one before I head back to that one. Second bar again. tackle the third bar I can see an F sharp let's be careful of retaining the F sharp accidentals throughout the whole bar yeah feel free to circle that pencil it in add an arrow I don't know what you want to do add the semitone between the second and third finger could all help right let's play that bar again forget the B flat at the end that's a prime spot to mark a tone between your fingers because it feels really wide it's back in first position so that second fingers pull right back it's on the G so there's already a bit of a stretchy feeling going on that's a good spot to make sure your tone is nice and square okay hello not this or this or anything weird make sure the top note is ringing 
Let's play from the start of the second line and play the first three bars nicely before we add anything else on. Sorry, do that again for me so I can fix my wrong note. Ready and. finger rings. If it doesn't ring, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Let's play just that bar. I find it difficult there to hold the one and two on. You can theoretically do it. I just don't find it comfortable in my left hand. So if you need to lift the fingers very slightly, to enable better intonation, do that. Lift the fingers, get the intonation to be correct. And you might find that over time as you practice it, you lift the fingers less and less until you don't need to lift them anymore. If you whack them wide off the violin and really show this, <coughs> we never wanna see that first thing you're hanging out the back like that. We just want it to come off enough that your muscles are relaxed and let you drop on the three and four. Let's play just the fourth bar of the second line. Okay, whole second line, ready and back away from it. Often I hear this, accidental F sharp because it's easy, make it a clean octave so that the chord just flips over. Okay, let's play the first two bars of the third line. Ready and... tricky try leaving the the one and twos on and hopping up and down with the three and the four that kind of feeling leave the one now leave the one and the two yeah again now the last bar of the line and simple. Let's play that last bar again. If your A isn't ringing clearly there,
check your elbows position. If you've kind of sickled back a bit because of that low one and your wrist may have collapsed a little bit, you're not gonna get the third finger in tune. Okay, so keep this rotated posture and keep the line unbroken. I'm pointing to the wrong side. Keep the line unbroken from the knuckle all the way to the elbow. You wanna have a really straight line. Okay, steel rod running through here. Never this thing happening. That sickling is really ugly and it does horrible things to your intonation. Last bar of the third line again, no sickling. Three and four. Super, let's put the whole third line together now. Sorry, my intonation was off then. Yeah, that tone I find difficult. Nasty short fourth finger. Then drop back. Again, so we've got that feeling of being spread out and getting out well in tune and then back to an E flat ready and again both times square tones between the second and third finger square tones between the second and first finger and this this stuff really helps when you're playing a lot of Bach or Mozart and you just want to reach and grab one note and obviously the shape of your hand shouldn't change but we have now the power to do this nicely with the first finger without collapsing at the rest again sharp accidental again natural oh how delightful is that let's do that f sharp to f natural bar again hmm. signaling things to come isn't it third bar and let's continue on into the fourth bar and find out what that f natural is heralding Sorry. Woo! Exciting things in that fourth bar. Let's do it really slowly. Ready, go. Swap. to the E, semitone, and sneak the B flat in, okay? Um, and make sure the second finger is ringing as it plays the E. Yep. And then it comes forward into F natural again. That last line looks suspiciously like the first line. Yes, we get something for free. Let's play the last bar of the fourth line again. The nasty one that we just did slowly. Maybe let's play each note twice. Dun, 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 dun. Ready, and. So the good thing about playing something like that in doubles repeated, you play the note and as you're playing it for the second time, think about the next thing. 
And as you're playing it for the second time, think about the next thing. And as you're playing, don't go ba ba. Oh no, what's next? Ba ba. Oh no, what's next? Ba think ba think ba think. Really helps. Ready and. <laughs> Make it a lot easier to play yeah so playing things in doubles is a really valid practice strategy that gives you the benefit of thinking time without stuffing up the melody too much you still hear the same progressions between the notes you don't stuff around with the rhythm it just gives you the benefit of that thing okay the next thing and it keeps your bow moving so that you're still in the habit of moving quickly and thinking quickly let's play it now with one stroke per note <laughs> If I'm too fast, that's fine. Just hit pause and do it yourself at your own speed. Whole fourth line. I think we should be able to Okay, let's play the last line again because I know I just attacked it in one big chunk. I didn't give you the benefit of breaking it down. Ready and... Cross. sticky in there isolate it to its little group of four notes practice the group of four notes don't try and practice the whole line 18 times you know be smart um, this is marked in my music anyway a staccato with the whole bow I don't often play it like that I find it exhausting I tend to play it as short staccato strokes in the lower half of the bow and I think it's a great preparation for the end of the Mozart Rondo those nasty running double stops so think about the frame of your left hand, think about your fingers being magnetized or using gravity, just dropping with relaxed weight onto the string. You only need to apply enough weight to pin the string to the fingerboard. Clamping extra weight on won't make you play any better, won't make the chord any better, won't make it better in tune. Um, and whenever you need to, find the ringing note or the resonant note in the chord and check it against the open string because your intonation will only improve if you do that. Of course, you know all this from the previous eight studies. And there's only a couple of new things in this. Okay, there's only, uh, I think, the incorporation of the hold place, hold place with two fingers is repetitively, is the new idea to focus on. And making sure that you're very relaxed in your hand. If you take a look at 10, you're going to see why that relaxation is so important. See you soon with 10.